isekai and fantasy anime coming out next season, winter 2024. Let's see what Annie News got us for today. Let's With come on. over 20 new isekai and fantasy bringing us into 2024, there's yeah. bound to be some I'm sure many of you haven't even heard. Maho. We've got big Sorry, games like solo leveling and dungeon meshi, yeah. all the way to the more subtle. Is dungeon meshi actually kind of hyped up? I I don't know. I, I I see that people are talking about it. Uh, obviously, solo leveling is the huge deal, right? But is dungeon meshi actually that hyped up? All the way to the more subtle underdogs like Ishida and Sengoku Yoko. So just like how we do to kick off every new season, let's mm. take a look at all the new isekai and fantasy anime coming out in the winter of 20. Oh, this is new for me because like uh, I'm I've been farming any news channel ever since Eminence and Shadow. So every new season he does this like almost kind of like a gigok style was like winter 2020 for what I'm gonna watch. You know everybody kind of does that. Okay, this is cool. Starting things off with the sequels. First we have Iruma. Wait, is that Iruma? Wait. Anticipated continuation. Ah, oh, it's Kimichi Moonlit Fantasy. Season 2, bro. Are we ever gonna watch Season 1? Come on, guys. Where are my Skimichi enjoyers? Skimichi Moonlit Fantasy. A two-core season going Dude, that's Iruma. Out, bringing us what looks to be the story about the other heroes. This was supposed to be something shown back in Season 1, but to sum it up, it's essentially the story of the heroes summoned after Makoto. Mm. They're the students who are going on the more classic isekai adventure, and it's their journey while doing so that constantly intersects with Makoto's. Okay. Neither parties actually realize that this is happening, but it's the way it does that makes this whole arc entertaining. I hear that the highlight of this anime is about how there's so many different players in the show and they're all doing their different thing, but it's somehow all like, like destinies like converge together and you would have never th thought that different factions like this would somehow just like live in this world together like this. Another series making its long awaited what is return this? is Blue Exorcist. Blue Exorcist. Adaptation of the next show. I don't think I really have a shown an audience. Like you guys probably don't want to watch this, right? Illuminati arc. It's been almost seven years since the last season, but seven if is even half as good as the manga was for this. Then this could very okay. well be the best season we've gotten yet. We just need to hope that the new studio can do it justice. Next, we have the second season of Mashley, ah Mash. Ah, Mash. Yes. Okay, so that's how you pronounce it, Mashley. I I I used to call this Mashley. Mashal? I, I just call it Mash, but okay, second season Mash, Divine Visionary, like, um, exam arc or some shit, right? This is gonna be hype. First, then you already know what you're getting. It's gonna be peak. It's just Harry Potter if you replaced Harry Potter with Saitama. Saitama, yeah. Banished One Punch Man in Hogwarts. It's also returning, so if you Banished from a hero party, I decided to live quiet in the country, so I think I've heard of this too, but... Again, not enough interest in my channel, I, I don't like think. If you wholesome slice of life fantasy romance of the first season, then that's pretty much what you're gonna get with this season. Okay. Now, that's all the anime returning after a full season break, but if we're counting the fantasy that started last season, we have Freerun, Shangri La Frontier, mm. and Ragna Crimson all continuing straight through to March. Oh that sh. Fucking Ragna Crimson, dude. Copyright striked with it. I, I I wish I could farm this too, but it's just like, I can't. I enjoyed episode one, but then just like, striked. Had to fucking counter appeal and everything I won, but this is bullshit, man. That's three quality anime that are following us into the next season. Yeah. So, even if these next anime don't really appeal to you, at least you have these three to fall back on. I guess these are Isekai and Fantasy, because I was going to say, yo, where's the classroom of the elite, man? But it's like, yeah, Isekai Fantasy. To start things off with all the new Isekai, first we have my instant death ability is so overpowered, no one in this other world stands a chance against me. <laughs> That's so, so fucking trash. I don't know if it's trash. My instant death ability is so overpowered, no one in this other world stands a chance against me. It could be fun. It's just one shot, dude. Okay. It's a light novel adaptation from the studio behind Tomodachi game, bringing okay. us a full class isekai similar to Adi Predetta. The one oh, I, the protagonist, should we be watching this? It's kind of like Ainz if Ainz didn't have a purpose. Wait, what? what I mean is that this anime is like fun? Mentioned in the title, when does this come out? Has first episode aired yet? Maybe I should be keeping an eye on it. It's, it's actually goaded? Okay, wait, hold up. Hold up. Maybe we have a new seasonal isekai to check out, guys. Wait. Our main character has... January 4th? Yesterday, it, it, it already came out? It's so good? Shit. Maybe we'll have to watch some extra. All right, we'll watch that tonight. Uh, you know what? Okay, we'll watch that tonight. Instant death ability that he uses to kill anyone and everyone. He's not this hero that fights evil and defends the weak, but is instead okay. this person that does what he wants and kills who he wants. Cool. So it doesn't matter whether you're good, bad, young, or old. If it meant he was being Based? inconvenienced... So true gender equality, right? He's gonna clap some girls too? This character would literally kill any number of people to prevent that. <laughs> it's an interesting premise that I suppose takes that power fantasy aspect to... Alright, he's the super edgy giga chat. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just do it. 
Okay, okay. Next, we have Tales of Wedding Rings, which somehow what approaches is Isekai in a way I haven't yet seen before. Tales of Wedding Our Rings. protagonist gets isekai and CGI. The Ring King, and it's his job to defeat the Abyssal King by creating a harem for Is himself. this good? What that means is he basically has to get five wives so he can get all five rings, which in turn... The five girlfriends that really, really... No, it's not that, but okay. The, the plot of this show is get five bitches so you can... What? Will grant him the power to defeat the big bad here. Okay, in order to defeat the, the demon lord of this show, collect five wives. All right. Did you guys, you guys like, the, you like, you like the manga for this? Didn't hear about it? A little bit low-key, maybe? It's a very straightforward premise, yet one I don't oh. think we've seen. Jelaine? Jel oh! Oh! oh. Isekai before. I don't know if that means- Oh, the five wives. They're actually- Okay. It's gonna be good, but it is different and it does have fan service. Mm. Now, I have talked about this next anime before, but- Oh, the healing wonder, one! This is- This is uh, tonight, I think, right? I think we might check out this one today. The wrong way to use healing magic. Yeah. This is another one. I, I think we're gonna check this one, too. It's the wrong way to use healing magic. Yeah. It's the story of an average student who gets isekai into a new world. Nice. Realizes he has an affinity for the extremely rare healing magic. I'm kind of just watching for this MILF right here. That's pretty much it. The sadistic MILF. Then starts using that magic for offense instead of support. Normally, this would get any healer flamed out of their party for being useless, but it's here that everyone instead just stares in terror at how OP he's become. Really? Okay. It's a comedic isekai that focuses on the dynamic between the main character and the crazy sensei teaching. Good. If there's comedy involved, and if it's basically just this dummy mommy milf sensei just, you know, stepping on us, I think we should be watching this today, too. So, okay, here's the game plan, right? We're going to watch this one, and I think instant death isekai tonight, along with Frieden. him how to use his healing magic. Okay. Next is the first of two villainous isekai coming out this season. Oh, villainous. This one that blends the genre together with a bit of power fantasy. Is power fantasy? V so, you know how Otome games, like we're watching right now, the uh, Mob Seca shit, right? It, it, even that has like villainous stuff, but villainous level 99. I may be the hidden boss, but I'm not the demon lord. It, it, how about, what do you guys think about this one? You want to watch this See, too? While normally most other villainous isekai are lighthearted comedies with Similar? Romance, yeah. This one removes that romance and brings okay. in an OP main character to replace it. The girl who re- I mean, this is straight up our alley, right? This is pretty much just like OP power fantasy, you know? Like, we love that shit. Mates as the main boss from her favorite Otome game. Realizes Great. she's the character who she thinks she is, then spends her childhood training in the dark magic she knows she specializes in. Okay. It's by the time she grows up and enters school after that all that training is made apparent as her max level and stats are revealed to everyone. It's enough to make them think that she's some mm. type of demon lord. Oh, okay, that's so, kind of cool. Her goal being to live a quiet life. Everyone's just hyping her up. That unfortunately isn't possible when she's creating literal black holes right in the middle of camp. I think this could be very fun to watch, huh? She's just flexing. Just this little girl born into her own ultimate game is the strongest ever. And she's got demon powers and she just flexes on everybody. I think this could be very fun. Yes. The other villainous anime coming out along with it is the seventh time loop one, which is more what of is a this one? zero type story. Our protagonist finds herself engaged to the very person who's killed her in her past life, and okay. it's the experience from those loops that she needs to use to break free from this one. Probably not the flavor of my channel. This looks interesting, something that I would definitely like to try, but I'm not sure if you guys would be interested in this if one. If she doesn't, then she'll be reborn again and have to start CGI. all over again. It's not a story many people have read the source material for, but of the small few who did, they did say it was good for the fantasy and romance it had. Okay. Next is Studio Mascot's adaptation of The Weakest Tamer Began a Journey. Wait, what is this? The Weakest Tamer Began a Journey to Pick Up Trash? <laughs> hey, Rimuru's here too. Look, it's a slime. I need to pick up trash, which is the first full anime to come from the studio who made the Cyberpunk 2077 ED music video. Okay. So, the anime may sound generic based on the light novel name that was given to it, but the yeah. quality of the animation does look better than many of the it other does. anime that we're getting this season. Uh, look! It, it reminds me of uh, Rimuru and, uh, what's his name, Suiyu from Campfire Cooking in Another World. Kind of looks like Hua Hua from fucking, you know, <laughs> uh, Honkai Star Rail, but so basically, Turquoise Hair Lolly just doing cute things here. As for the story itself, okay. it's a pure survival fantasy focusing on this unlikely survival and slime. This girl can only tame the weakest level. So, like, basically, super OP slime that she tames, and everybody thinks that, oh, what could this small little child and a slime do? But the but the slime is actually fucking like crack. So, that kind of power fantasy. One slime that she can find, and it's them two together that must salvage whatever trash they can in order to survive. 
Oh. An isekai that's somewhat similar yet vastly different is the more- Inukai thought dog, wait! Reincarnated as a dog, wait! More wholesome slice of life fluffy paradise. It's similar because the protagonist's powers are kind of like that of a tamer's, but different- Okay, and he uses- his... Okay, his brain is not brain rotted like me. As soon as I saw that dog, and because it's about isekai and reincarnation, and because it's like another anime, I immediately thought, Inukai-san's dog, no, no, it's not that. No, chill it's out. she doesn't really have to struggle at all. Unlike the main character from Weakest Tamer, the girl in this isekai is loved by all non-human beings. Okay. Making for a show where every scene is filled with all these heartwarming interactions just like this one. Now, the last isekai coming out this season is what Studio is Silverlink's adaptation of the light novel Sasaki and Peeps. Silverlink is pretty well known, right? Sasaki and Peeps. The cover picture doesn't really do it for me, but have you guys heard of this one? A story about a corporate slave who starts living life once he gains the power to start crossing between the real world and a fan. I've been realizing recently more and more, again, it's probably because I'm a fucking boomer salary man, but like, I'm noticing that the main character of these shows are like, usually just like, you know, they're either neats or like office workers, right? They're either, like, these isekai protagonists, before they get reincarnated, right, they're usually like, just complete shut and neats. Or they're like 9 to 5 slave, <laughs> just to make it more relatable to the audience. Slave who starts living life once he gains the power to <laughs> Fuck. between the real world and a fantasy one. Okay. He comes across a bird who turns out to be a once powerful sage, and it's this new pet of his that grants him all sorts of power. Opening cool. his once boring life to all sorts of new opportunities. So basically, it's a middle-aged man fantasy, huh? Is it for any middle-aged office workers fantasy? I can probably enjoy this. So, it doesn't seem like an anime that's all too serious, but the concept of a grown salary man moonlighting as an yeah. protagonist does seem rather interesting. It does seem interesting? Now, it's because, like, he's staying in the salary man form. Huh. I could be tempted to watch this, bro. This is me, dude. <laughs> this is fucking me. Now, there is one other isekai that I haven't mentioned yet, Ooh. but with no trailer to release. I see some, I see some furries, I see some elves, I see one dude in a hot pink surrounded by five girls. Okay, okay. They showcase anything at all. All I'll say is it seems like interspecies reviewers, but with hot springs. Hmm. Switching over to the pure fantasy series now. Here we go. First and foremost, we have solo leveling. Yes! It's not something I'm going to talk much about here, but if you want to see my thoughts and know what to expect from it, you can check out this video where I talk for 13 minutes about how good it is. Bro, and I take that 13 minutes into a 30 minute reaction video. We farmed that shit. Thank you, Andy News, for another season of goaded content. I was like, damn, Eminence and Shadow's done. I can't farm Andy News again hold up we got solo leveling and then in april you know what happens reincarnate as a slime mushoku tensei mm, 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 mm. i am a shameless professional leech i will milk him it's actually the show i plan on covering every week this season yeah oh <laughs> every week let's go interesting one because while it is definitely a harem <laughs> with lots of yeah. fan service as a story from the same creator as a comic got kill it doesn't fall oh, into the same generic bargain bin as a lot of other similar anime. I wouldn't say it's on the same level as the gritty action story Akamaga Kill is known for, but by keeping the plot simple and pacing quick, we instead get to focus on a dynamic cast of characters and the interactions between them. Yes, the rewards. Combine this with lots of action and the well, rewards. anime titties, and that's pretty much what you can expect from this. I'm not going to bother explaining the specifics of the plot, since in all honesty, I don't think it's really what matters here. If you're watching Chain Soldier, you're good. Yo, to this ending, there's something about this ending, bro. Who is this MILF? I need to get the ending reaction now, but th this this woman, dude. Hmm. Watching Chain Soldier, hmm. you're going to be watching it for those two things I mentioned earlier. Oh, yeah. Next is Studio Trigger's newest anime, which Dungeon for the Meshi. first time since Inobato covers a story that isn't one of their originals. It's an adaptation of a manga that goes by the name of Dungeon Meshi. Unfortunately, there won't be any epic space battles in this, but what we'll get instead is more the chill. fantasy non-etchy version of Food Wars. A story whose focus is technically- Fantasy non etch Well, I haven't watched Food Wars, but I'm a little hesitant on this. I don't know if I should pull the trigger and just like go into it. Leon saving a companion lost in the dungeon. Isn't this studio trigger? <laughs> but the real intrigue is how the party doing so survives by eating monsters. Cool. It's a gourmet fantasy combined with a compelling adventure, both of which are tied together with detailed world building and relatable characters. 
top it off with animation from Studio Trigger, and I think what we have here is a top contender for one of the better anime this season. Really? Next is the action-focused fantasy The Witch and the Beast, which if oh. you've read the manga, you'll know has the potential to be yet another contender for best anime of the season. What? It's a dark fantasy sh R it, Am I sleeping on this one? Maybe we should check the trailer out. Routed in mystery, set in a Victorian-esque world filled with witches, curses, and everything in between. An unlikely duo form a temporary partnership, and it's their pursuit of a shared goal that leads them through all sorts of cases involving the fantastical underworld. Is this actually that hyped? I don't know if my audience would enjoy this too much, but Annie News is hyping it kind up. Kind of like if Power and Nanami were to work together as investigative detectives. <laughs> what? A fucking buffoon that doesn't wipe her ass and, and fucking Nanami? Wait, that's kind of an interesting pair. I could see that. That would be fun. It's not those independent <laughs> stories that makes The Witch and the Beast so good, though, but instead the contrast between this duo who are so Nanami, okay, I see, each I see. Other. So, whether you're a fan of dark fantasies or well written characters, both will be present in this story that's rated rather highly. Cool. A fantasy cool. that seems to be just pure action is my personal recommendation for the season, Ishura. I've already talked about it before, but. Ishura. Hmm, people have been kind of recommending me this too in chat, and I kind of have been overlooking it. But if Andy News is saying this is his pick, hmm. As the newest anime from the studio behind Interspecies Reviewers and High School DXD. I see. Okay, this is why you guys want me to watch this, so you fucking degenerates. This one throws us into an intriguing world of chaos. The Demon King has long been dead, and in his stead there are numerous demigods just wreaking havoc everywhere. Cool, okay. They're this massive cast of uniquely overpowered characters, all of which are vying for the title of true hero. Combine this with their constant shifting in and out of different political and- It's not Etsy though, and okay. What you get are these awesome fights between what's essentially the strongest people- Has episode one of should have been out yet or nah? We might have to check out a trailer for this too. You know what? Any news, he, he usually has, like- he has good taste, and his taste is pretty much what my audience wants, so, okay. So, you're probably not gonna find- It's out? Developed okay. Characters ...with lots of depth here, but what you will get is something more- She- It's out? Two days? What is it? Is it out or not? Two days ago? Oh, it's out two days ago. I see, I see. Okay, you know what? I think tonight we're gonna do a little bit of an anime- I'm not gonna make Sir Gregor edit, you know, fucking five different episodes. But well, I think we're going to be farming some weekly shows today. Oh, yeah. Kin to a Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter situation. Just a bunch of diverse fighters who like to throw hands with each other. Cool. It's a setting I honestly feel sounds the most fun out of all of them. This Is this kind of like a battle royale? You, you know how like in Fate, isn't there like a like the Holy Grail War and there's like a bunch of different people all fighting amongst like kind of like free for all all together. Kind of like that. Season. The next anime is the reason why ReZero won't be coming till the end of the year because... <laughs> Okay, ReZero, uh, people have been begging me to watch ReZero on this channel. We will watch ReZero, but here's the thing. There's another anime that their studio decided to focus on. It's, it's, it's some fucking furry anime, right? You guys probably hate this shit because you're like, fuck, ReZero could have been in April. But to me, it's like perfect because the longer ReZero is delayed, the longer ReZero is delayed, the bigger my channel gets. And by the time ReZero gets here, Right, I can milk it for more views compared to a scenario where my channel was smaller in farming reserve. You know what I'm saying? So like, to me, I hope they keep delaying ReZero <laughs> and Overlord Season 5. I hope that shit's in fucking five years, dude. Okay, we, we will be covering it. We will covering it. But from the perspective of a content creator trying to maximize views, this is what I think about, okay? But you guys are probably like, what? Don't worry, we will watch ReZero. Just like how I did Classroom the Elite, we lead up into the season an episode a day, perfectly scheduled, okay? Don't worry, we'll get there. Studio White Fox has confirmed Sengoku Yoko will be 37 episodes straight. 37? That's three cores or nine straight months of non-stop anime from them. Personally, is it good though? I wish it was 37 weekly episodes of ReZero, but apparently Sengoku Yoko is True. pretty good too. It's a classic shounen with your typical action and fantasy. I don't think this is gonna do well on my channel. This is like, uh, like Shonen already does bad in my channel, but this is like a Hell's Paradise situation. Tropes. The world is split between humans and monsters, and a group consisting of both fantasy. Yeah, I don't think this will do well from turning for me into monsters. 
Sure, there's definitely more to it than just that, but on a very basic level, that's pretty much Whoa. the core aspect of it. Next, we have some of the more basic fantasies, which for the most part look relatively average. All right, there's just mid. the unwanted undead adventurer by Studio Connect, bringing us an adventurer turned undead and his journey to find out why he became an undead. Isn't this a webtoon? About a skeleton dude? Or am I wrong? There's the strongest tank's labyrinth raids, which is another kicked from the hero party story centering around a tank who's def <laughs> So this is uh, the rising of the shield hero? Okay, rising of the shield hero. <laughs> okay, rising of the shield hero. <laughs> Both of the rising of the shield hero, okay. I I'm saying Bofuri is in the tank stats, not in terms of the revenge or the getting kicked out. The demon prince is more of a romance fantasy, while Hime-sama is a comedy involving torture, food, and a captured Food wars? Okay, etchy food. Then last we have Dr. Release, which is a reincarnation anime focusing on a doctor using her past life's knowledge to save people. Hmm. So I'm sure some of these are definitely worth watching, but if you're curious to see more, then the links to their trailers will be down in the description. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty much every isekai and fantasy coming out this season. If any of them caught your interest, then be sure to let me know which of them that you plan on watching. Ishura? I think Ishida is pretty compelling to me. We're obviously going to watch Solo Leveling, but Ishida was his recommendation. I think we're going to check a trailer of that now. There is the, the villainous 99 Isekai kind of looks interesting. The healing one we're going to try out tonight. And there is also Instant Death Isekai. I think those are the picks from him. For me, there was actually yeah. quite a few that seemed rather promising. So whether you like them or not, let me know down in the comments which ones you're going to check out. Then All I have to say is God bless any news. Please, guys, go to his channel, like his videos, subscribe, please support his content. You know, he's only at 622,000 subscribers. I think he can hit a million pretty soon, though. If you guys go and like it, you know, we got to support our small creators in this anime niche. But yeah, there's a lot of new animes coming out this season. A couple of them that I didn't even know was actually this interesting. So you might have to do some trailer reactions and farm them out. But look, uh, look forward to those anime reactions that I might be posting pretty soon.